Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Okay, so in this segment, we will be looking at um, a play by Oliver Goldsmith, She Stooped to Conquer. Now, this is the other play required for the non-African drama section. The other one we treated was A Racing in the Sun by Lauren Hansberry. Now, this is She Stoops to Conquer by Oliver Goldsmith. Now, we'll be looking at background and setting themes, characters, language and style used. Now, a brief background to this play. Now, what you must know, it is first a comedy. Um, some have called it a laughing comedy in quote. Uh, she Stoops to Conquer is a late 18th century play written by an Irish author, Oliver Goldsmith. It is a play of mistaken identities, practical jokes, plots within plots. Um, as, as, at the time of She Stoops to Conquer, popular theater comedy was separated into what we call there was sentimental comedy and laughing comedy. Now, this play falls into the category of laughing comedy, uh, which is um, characterized by humor, uh, mocking advice, um, practical jokes, um, wit, mistaking identities, and so on. So, that is actually what we see uh, that comes to play in this drama. Now, um, what, what is uh, the brief summary of the plot? All right, so um, a brief summary of the plot of this play now there are the characters mr hardcastle who is a rich man uh, he wishes to marry off his daughter to uh, the, uh, the son of his friend charles malu now he wants to uh, perform a fusion of the hardcastle family and the malu family now it is believed that when you come from a certain class as at that time of the play you are to marry from someone of a similar high class as yours so that is what mr hardcastle was trying to achieve there now at the end of the day when mr hardcastle informs his daughter of a malu young malu that is the son of charles malu uh, she actually picks interest but loses interest at some point by the time her father tells her that um, young malu is a shy and reserved young man and she has no liking for shy and reserved young men so malo and his friend hastens um, decide to go to the home of the hard castle so as they are on their way they stop by uh, a bar known as the three pigeons and while they are discussing they meet a particular uh, humorous character there tony lumpkin and they tell him of their desire to visit the hard castle family and Tony Lumpkin, being a mischievous character, takes the advantage to play a prank on them. So he tells them that the Hardcastle home is very far, so they have to put up in an inn. But somehow he leads them to the Hardcastle's home and tells them that the place is an inn. That is what we call a hotel. So somehow, oh, fortunately, Marlow and his friend Hastings begin to treat the occupants in that place with disrespect thinking that they are servants now you can see uh, the issue or the theme of class representation being portrayed in this aspect because it is believed that servants are to be talked to or relegated to the background so malo and his friend believe that they are in a hotel or an inn so they begin to talk to the occupants of the house that is the hard castle home uh, with disrespect unknown to them uh, mr hard castle is supposed to be um, marlo's father-in-law to be uh, however the family treats them um, well um, so marlo encounters kate hard castle who is mr hard castle's daughter and she takes a liking to him but she discovers that Marlo would rather prefer a woman of a low class so that because he is shy and reserved he would feel more confident around a woman of a low class so that he would not feel intimidated now what does Kate do Kate has to disguise herself 
to be a bar maid to be a servant so that her castle can take a liking to her and Hastings on the other hand falls in love with her cousin Constance Neville so while that is going on um, Constance Neville and Hastings cannot fully have an engagement because um, Constance is without diary now as at the time of the play um, it, it is it is uh, important that a woman from a wealthy class or from a noble family has a higher chance of attracting a good suitor because of her wealth now as at that time um, her inheritance that is the casket of jewels that she was to inherit was stolen by Tony Lumpkin and he passes them round. Now Tony Lumpkin was actually supposed to be betrothed to Constance but Constance does not like Tony Lumpkin and so Tony is involved in a series of mischievous acts to just in the attempt to get his inheritance. Actually it is said in the play that until he is 21 years of age uh, before he would get his inheritance and he is to marry Constance but he has no liking for Constance so in the bid to get his inheritance he has to play a lot of tricks and uh, somehow the play ends on a very good note Tony gets his inheritance anyway and then Charles Mallow by the time Charles Mallow that is um, the young Mallow's father when he comes to visit the hard castle uh, the identities of um, Kate and the other characters are being revealed they be the, um, the other characters that is young Mallow and his friend Hastings realize that they are not in a hotel but they're actually in the home of their in-laws to be so the play ends on a good note Constance gets her wish she marries Hastings uh, she marries Mr. Hastings while uh, Kate um, also ends up with Mr. Marlow. Tony gets his inheritance. Now, we will look at the themes in this play. Now, what are the major issues that the author is trying to depict in this play? Now, uh, we'll look at the themes of this play. Now, the first major theme that Oliver Goldsmith talks about in this play is class bias. Now there is um, uh, uh, an issue of class segregation in this play. Now let's look at this. Until Kate Hardcastle teaches Marlow a lesson, you know, Marlow responds to women solely on the basis of their class. Now the irony is young Marlow feels comfortable around women of the low class, but he despises them however he holds women in high esteem that is women of the high class he holds them in esteem but he feels intimidated and shy around them now that is the irony there like the london society in which he was brought up he assumes that all women of a certain class think and act according to artificial standards expected of that class another example of um, class bias being shown here is Mrs. Hardcastle, that is Kate's mother. She appears to assess a person by the value of his or her possessions. Another thing that Oliver Goldsmith itemizes here is sex roles, that is gender roles. In many ways, she stoops to conquer, satirizes the ways the 18th century society believe that proper men and women ought to behave while the play shows the traditional pattern of male female relations in hastings wooing constance it is also the reverse the era of sexual etiquette by having kate pursue Marlowe. now um, at this juncture we would um, digress and explain the significance of this title she stoops to conquer now it is believed that normally in society a man is to chase a woman for love to get her attention now why is this play title she stoops to conquer now kept seeing that she is attracted to Marlo, but knowing his problem of being shy around high-class women she stoops to conquer literally in the sense that she has to come down to his level and try to woo him indirectly to make herself 
accessible to him that is why she disguises as a maid so that she can build a rapport between herself and malu so that is the idea captured in this play which explains the role of gender in romantic relationships another theme here this leads us to another theme which is truth and falsehood um, thematically related to the theme of appearance and reality the author uses falsehood to reveal truth just like the disguise that uh, Kate puts up most obviously Tony's lie about the hard castles mansion being an inn or a hotel produces the truth of the lover's affections um, lying also leads to poetic justice when constance asks to wear her jewels mrs hardcastle lies and tells her they have been lost so what happens tony takes the jewels to give to hastings and when mrs hardcastle goes to find them they have been lost thus her lie has become true so you find out that in, in, in this play, through a series of deceits and um, a lot of mischief going on, the author uses falsehood, lies, deceit to actually portray truth. That is why at the end of the play, the real characters, the real characteristics, that is the real behaviors of the cast begin to show as the play unfolds. Okay, the last thing we'll be looking at is deceit and trickery that is the use of tricks much of the play's comedy comes from tony lumpkin um, the trickery played by various characters of course which is um is performed by tony lumpkin the most important scenes from tony including his lie about the hard castle's home and his scheme of driving his mother and constance around in circles However, deceit also reaches to the center of the play's more major themes. In a sense, the only reason anyone learns anything about their deep assumptions about class and behavior is because they are being duped into seeing characters in different ways. Okay, so now having looked at the themes, uh, we talked about class, uh, class segregation, we talked about deceit, and tricks we talked about the theme of appearance versus reality and using falsehood to achieve truth now at this juncture we'll look at the characters being uh, showcased in this play um, the first character we'll be looking at is of course let us discuss the role of Tony Lumpkin uh, Tony Lumpkin is the son of Mrs. Hardcastle by her first husband, Mr. Lumpkin, and stepson to Mr. Hatcastle. He is portrayed as mischievous, on an, 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 an uned, uned, uneducated playboy, and a very consumptive figure, a fat, ill drinking man who has little ambition except to play practical jokes and to visit the local tavern. Um, somehow, his mother, Mrs. Hardcastle has no authority over him and their relationship contrasts with that between Hardcastle and Kate. Actually, um, she, she has more control over Kate than um, Tony Lumpkin. Now, what is the significance of Tony Lumpkin's role in this play? He, it is Tony's initial deception of Malu for a joke which sets up the plot. Um, Tony goes to great efforts to help Nelvin and Hastings in their plans to leave the country because he despises her. Um, another significance is Tony's freewheeling ways of drinking and tomfoolery is probably because the huge inheritance that awaits him when he comes of age. Uh, we will look at the character of Miss Kate Hardcastle. Now she's the pretty daughter of the Hardcastle who is wooed by young Charles Marlow. She's called Miss Hardcastle in the play. Kate respects her father, dressing plainly in his presence to please him. Kate seeks in marriage a compatible and companionable husband, but not she actually wants uh, love and companionship not money and status in an effort to ascertain Marlo's true feelings she pretends to be a bar maid you see she stoops to conquer so as to get him 
to announce that he loves her despite her low social position what is the significance of her character here um she's um when charles Marlow mistakes her for being a woman of the low class she allows him to continue to mistake her identity thus freeing his captive tongue so that she can discover what he really is or and what he really thinks about her she's calculating and scheming posing as a maid and deceiving Marlow, causing him to fall in love with her um, even though her father recommended Marlow to her she investigates him herself to make up her mind not because of the attractive wealthy background of Marlow. then she's her, her foremost virtue in the world is liveliness she wants to live and enjoy her life a desire that strict formality seems to exclude now we will also look at the character of constance uh constance is an orphan she is the niece to mrs hardcastle who holds her inheritance of jewels in her possession she is beautiful a beautiful young lady who loves hastings but it's bedeviled by Mrs. Hardcastle's schemes to match her with Tony. Actually, she was supposed to marry Tony, but she's in love with Mr. Hastings. Her aunt, Mrs. Hardcastle, wishes her to marry Tony Lumpkin, but like I said, she wants Hastings. Neville schemes with Hastings and Tony to get the jewels, that is her inheritance, so she can flee to France with her lover. The significance of her role briefly material greed in mrs hardcastle is signposted for scheming to match make tony and neville because she is the heir to large fortune of jewels so thus miss neville is projected as a focused and determined lady she follows her heart and also insists on her legal inheritance without bowing to her aunt's wish to marry her cousin in the person of tony lumpkin Okay, we'll look at one more character, and that is the person of young Charles Marlow, um, who is in love with Kate Hardcastle. Now, he is projected as a promising young man who comes to the country to woo Miss Kate Hardcastle. His only drawback or flaw, or what we call weakness, is the fact that he's extremely shy and refined. He's extremely shy around refined ladies that is ladies of the high class although he is completely at ease and even forward with women of the working class that is women of humble birth as we see in how he relates with hardcastle that is miss kate hardcastle as a barmaid the central and pivotal male character in the play used by uh, goldsmith to satirize england's preoccupation with and over emphasis on class distinctions now what is the significance of mr marlowe's character here because mr marlowe's rudeness is comic the audience is likely not to dislike him for it thus his interview with kate exploits the man's fears as she, as he relates with kate we begin to see him for who he really is and it convinces miss miss hardcastle that is kate that she will have to alter her persona drastically drastically to make a relationship with the man finally uh, what other significance of this play it will also interest you to know that the character of charles Marlowe, that is young charles Marlowe himself is similar to that of the playwright now in his lifetime um goldsmith was described as one who acted too sheepishly around women of a higher class than himself and amongst creatures of another stamp acted with the most confidence of course um it is um kind of um it, actually what happens is most writers project their characters to um showcase their feelings or something real that actually happened to them which is the case of oliver goldsmith projecting uh young marlo as himself that is the playwright all right so moving on we'll look at the language and style used in this play the style is distinctive in form um, a distinctive and identifiable form in an artistic medium such as literature in this play she stoops to conquer goldsmith employs witty 
yet simple but graceful style in his writing now um, from the beginning of the play it is very entertaining and easy to understand the plot is progressive in a way that the audience can easily understand it it only presents a few words or idioms which modern audiences may not understand but the story is very progressive one is easy it's easy for one to follow the storyline now um, the play has been uh, portrayed as a very good comedy um, she stoops to conquer as a play is a comedy in different ways for example it is a comedy of manners now how is it a comedy of manners the play can be seen as a comedy of manners where set in a polite society the comedy arises from the gap between the characters attempts to preserve their society standards of polite behavior that also contrasts to their true behavior that is why you see a lot of pretenses and hypocrisy in the play now it is also a romantic comedy of course um, some critics have referred to the play she stood to conquer as a romantic comedy which depicts how seriously young people take love and how foolishly it makes them behave um, this is also similar to Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night Dream if you have read Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night Dream you will also see um, the, the role of identities coming to play you see characters going behaving showing extreme behaviors uh, because of the people that they love it is also a satire now this play is comic in a very satirical way in the sense that the author Oliver Goldsmith was trying to look at the issues of classic segregation which was very rampant as at that time and then um, it's also referred to as a farce or comedy of errors now a fast is an extreme kind of comedy um, the play is sometimes described as a comedy of errors because it is based on multiple misunderstandings uh, example an example of such misunderstanding is um, mr. Marlowe believing that the home of the heart castle is an inn or a hotel so that is what we refer to as a comedy of errors now we will look at um, some questions here in this play now um, the, the major question we want to ask is what is the significance of this title she stoops to conquer by oliver goldsmith another question that we will look at is i um analyze this play she stoops to conquer as a comedy now you must take note that these questions and others will be displayed on your screen to determine how much you have learned in this class. I hope you found this material very useful. Thank you very much.